Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. How are you? Um, new video. Sunday, the 9th of August, 2020. We're still on lockdown in the northwest of England where we're still not able to uh, worship together. So I guess you've got me, but hopefully you've got a word from God. And I, I'm, just, uh, I'm just smiling. It's just like there's such a presence of God. You know, like, you know when you send uh, messages on your phone and, um, you know, WhatsApp messages or, or you've got the little emojis, haven't you? Uh, you know, the smiley face or the praying hands or whatever. You know the one that goes like that? Like that. Like you've done something wrong, you go, I don't believe it. I love that one. I think it's really brilliant. And do you know what? I think God does that with me quite often. I think he looks at me and goes like that. It just makes me smile. Um, maybe he does it with you as well. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, we're going to have a look at the word of God today. I want to encourage you. Um, I really believe God will speak to us. I, I believe God always speaks to us. Why he ever uses me, I'll never know. And if he speaks to you through me, just give glory to him because, I, <laughs> because I'm thinking there's some of that today. And it's funny. Don't. You know, like, uh, is it Homer and the Simpsons? He goes, don't. Well, here we go. Exodus chapter 15. Okay. Here's the situation. Um, what's happened is that the Israelites, they've been, uh, they've been rescued out of Egypt. And the Egyptian army were chasing them. And they've just gone through the Red Sea. They came to the sea. If you remember, they all came to the sea. And they were terrified. And they expected the Egyptian army would come down upon them. And actually annihilate them. Destroy them. It would be the last time them Israelites try and leave Egypt. As according to the army. And they were desperate. They were terrified. And Moses called out to God. And God said, what have you got in your hand? And he had a staff. And he said, stretch it out. And Moses stretched out the staff. And the waters of the Red Sea parted. And the people walked through it. A beautiful, amazing, miraculous uh, salvation story of a nation who were crying out to God. A salvation story. And you and I, we have an amazing, miraculous salvation story. It might be that you listen to this and you haven't actually got that salvation. You've come to the edge of the Red Sea. You're there at the edge of it. And you're terrified and you don't know what to do next. <laughs> How many of us are like that in life, you know? We go through life and everything, everything comes against us. So much trouble. Uh, we go sink deeper and deeper, some of us into depression. Our sinfulness and the stuff that we've done and the guilt and the shame, they just crush us. And we get to that and we almost think we're terrified. You know, fear. Fear comes in. And what should we do when fear comes in? We should cry out to God, help Lord. I need you. Cry out to God in prayer. You know, God's not just a healing God. In the physical sense, he's a salvation God. He saves. He, uh, he's an, an almost... He... Oh, what can I say? Well, I am going to use the word healing, even though I've just said he's not a healing God, but he's a healing God that takes everything, spirit, soul, and body. And maybe you need a healing today. And I believe in the scriptures that we'll look at today, perhaps there's a chance because our God heals. Uh, my sister the other day, she sent me a message and uh, I sent her the previous video. Uh, do you know, I can't even remember what it was called. Uh, the last video I did on Thursday. And uh, anyway, I sent it to her. She said, oh, thanks. Thanks, Peter. She said, I'll, I've got edit right now. I'll, I'll watch it. I'll watch it later. I'll watch it tomorrow. So instantly I texted her back. I said, if you've got edit, you need to pray and ask God to heal it. I got a letter a few days later, which was great. And she put it little aside in brackets, so I think, in the letter saying, oh, by the way, after I prayed, my headache went, praise God. That is Jesus. This is who we worship. We have to start to uh, allow uh, Jesus to live through us. OK, we, 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 we have Jesus here, but we need him here, 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 everywhere. We need to just acknowledge Acknowledge when we acknowledge something, we're calling it into being. Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus transforms. We're calling him into being. We're putting clothes on the Lord, not leaving him in a cupboard or on a shelf or by the bedside or in a book. 
It's the living word. This is our God. Sorry, I've moved, I've moved, I've di di diversified or whatever you call it. We're back to Exodus 15. So they've gone through the Red Sea now, all right? This amazing miracle. They got the other side. They're doing a wonderful jig and a wonderful dance and it's great. And there's a beautiful song that Miriam sings. All praising and glorifying, marvellous, just just blown away by what God has just done in their lives. And now then the three days. We're coming to the story on Exodus 15, verse 22. And it says this, Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they travelled in the desert. Three days. But they couldn't find any water. Three days they went travelling, finding no water. And then they came to a place called Marah. Uh, and they couldn't drink its water because it was bitter. And in brackets we've got that is why the place is called Marah. So actually the place Marah means bitterness or bitter. And uh, it, it was already there. In other words, the Israelites are wandering, come to this place called Mara with the name Bitter. The water is already bitter. So the people grumble against Moses and say, what are we going to drink? I wonder if they went there and tasted the drink. I thought, oh goodness me, this, this tastes awful. Not like nice, fresh water like this. Moses cried out to the Lord again. Lord, help! What am I going to do? Three days. We're desperate. We're thirsty. What can I do? And he said, then the Lord showed him a piece of wood. And Moses, he threw it into the water. And the water became fit to drink. It was no longer bitter. It was beautiful and pure. Beautiful and pure. And some people say that that piece of wood represents the cross of Jesus Christ. That our lives are like when the Israelites get to the edge of the Red Sea and we're frightened and we don't know where we're going and the enemies are coming against us and they're going to destroy us, whatever it might be, the addictions that can destroy us, the depression, whatever it is that crushes life and tries to kill us. We get to that point. And it's almost like they got to this point as well where now they're desperately thirsty but the cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus, the son of the living God. Remember, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son, whoever believes in him. We've got to believe, folks. We've got to learn to believe. Lord, teach me how to believe. This should be our prayer. Teach me, Lord. Teach me how to believe. Moses cried out, piece of wood in the water. The water was drinkable now. And now our lives, that piece of wood, that same cross of Jesus can be, can be placed, thrown into our lives. We can grab it in two hands and say, get it in here. Get the cross of Jesus into us. The cross of Jesus sounds for, when we take the cross of Jesus, we're acknowledging that the Son of God died for us. We're acknowledging that we can be saved. We're acknowledging that life can be better. Life can be different. That we need a saviour. And when we acknowledge and realise that we need a saviour, we can't save ourselves. No amount of good works will save you. No amount of giving to charity, no amount of blessing on the people will ever save you. There's only one who can save and that's Jesus. That's Jesus, the son of the living God. Apply the cross to your life and apply the cross, apply the cross to my life. Apply the cross to your situation. What situation are you going to? What is it? Are you at the edge of the Red Sea right now? Are you, is it like a, an edge of the Red Sea experience? I want to tell you something. Apply the cross. Don't go another three days looking for water. And that's what people do. They'll look for every other way how to solve this problem and how to solve that problem. I've done it myself. I've done it myself. I've gone looking uh, every, every way, each way. I remember years ago, I'm going back to 1990, 89, 90. It's a long time ago now. Gonna speak. It doesn't seem that long, but it's a long time ago. But what transformed me, it was kind of like this sort of experience. I've become a Christian in 1987. And then I'd given the, 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 uh, the business to God. But there's a whole different story in there. I was still in partnership and God brought me through all that. But then I came to a place where we had no work. We would no work whatsoever. And so for three days, I went looking for work. I put a nice, glamorous looking rep on the road. I thought, well, she's nice looking. She'll go and get us some orders. 
Uh -uh. That's the way of the world. That's what the world did. I looked, I looked at what did the world do? What were other people doing in the world? And that's what they were doing. Cost us probably six months and a lot of money. Put us into even more debt. No orders. Nothing came. And we were struggling and struggling. We came to a point where we were so desperate. We were up to our eyes in, in debt, in mortgages, two mortgages. So much debt. I was desperate. And I came and I, was, and I, came and I was on my knees. And it was like I was at the Red Sea. It was like I was there on my knees. And all these enemies of debt and everything was coming upon me. And I had nowhere to go. And then I read in a book by a man who's... Who's in heaven now called Edwin Lewis Cole and he put this that I've said this before uh, a winner it's not somebody who never loses it's someone who never quits and I don't know about you but maybe you're in a place where you know you've had enough and you feel like perhaps You've had enough. You want to quit. You're done. You're done. Whatever situation you find yourself in, you're done. I was in that situation way back then in 1990. 89, 90, 91, that sort of period. I was done, but I read that word. Hang on a minute. If I'm a winner, and Jesus says I am a winner, then surely I can't quit because I was ready for quitting. I had enough. I didn't know what. I was desperate. And, and the waters that I tasted were all bitter and they didn't work and they were no good for me. And I needed to apply the cross. And so I got on my knees. I, I got up early that morning. I used to think it was early anyway. It was about half, four or five o'clock in the morning. And I came down to my office at the factory and I knelt down and I said, Lord God, <laughs> I need you, Jesus, I need you. I applied the cross of Jesus to my situation. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Our... I was there surrounded by bitterness. I was at the bitter place. I was at Mara. My life was at Mara, surrounded by bitterness. And God, Lord God, I need you. I need you to send me a customer from abroad. And all I can explain to you is in that little office room, back then, way back then, early in the morning, God saw me. And God saw my desperation. And God saw that I needed him. And God saw that I acknowledged that I needed him. And God saw that I tried everything else. And sometimes when we've tried everything else, God, everything else we try in life, everything. And some of us try everything else and then don't even try God and we go even deeper and fall. I want to encourage you today to when you've got to try and get to God before you get to you've tried everything else. That's a good idea. That's wise. That's wisdom. Anyway, God sent me these customers from abroad and they came into the factory. And I can only tell you, they, they, I thought, they came, they came, three of them, three guys coming from Holland. They came and they looked around, they liked what they saw of our products and they went and said, we'll come back next week. I didn't even think they'd come back. Hand on heart, I had no idea they'd come back. I thought, yeah, that's right, yeah, we'll never see you again. So I'd, I still was in a, an unbelief place. Don't, so don't. Don't think that you've got to conjure up belief and faith and you've got to say, yeah, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, Lord. Just be honest and truthful to God. Be honest and truthful. I was, I just didn't believe it. I thought, well, I remember having a conversation thinking, yeah, I've heard it all before because I had. And people had promised and people had made false promises. Can I just tell you something? If people have made you false promises in your life and said they'll do things, but they've never done them, they've never done them, and they've worn you down, and they've worn you down so much so that you have no confidence in people who say they'll do something, so much so that you've built a wall, because you're not going to let them hurt you again. It's not a good place to be. Let Jesus, let the cross of Jesus come and break down that wall. He can break down walls, can Jesus? Break down walls of prejudice. He can break down walls. He can break down walls of fear. This is our God. He can break down the walls. He can break down the walls. Remember the walls of Jericho? Same thing happened. You had Joshua and the Israelites and they were crossing over uh, the River Jordan. And the mad thing was the River Jordan was in full flood. But they were still crossing over the River Jordan. And when they got across the River Jordan, and that were great, they came to Jericho, these fortified walls. 
And they thought, oh my goodness, how are we ever going to do that? And what did God say? God said, march around seven times. And, it, and he said, just march around seven times. Once a day, every day, seven times. On the seventh day, they went seven times round. And, they, and then when they let, they let out a loud shout, Hallelujah! I don't know what they shouted. I'm not even looking at it now. It's just God's bringing. But they shouted. And all the walls came tumbling down. Sometimes you've got to get a place in. Father, I need you. Break down these walls. Sometimes you've got to get passionate. Break down. Believe it. Break down the walls of fear. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I kneeled in my office and I prayed and the presence of God came. And the guy said they'd come back and I didn't believe it. And then they came back and there were two taxis and there were six guys, two taxis flown to Manchester Airport, two black Hackney ta cab, taxi cabs pulled into our yard on that morning, one week later. And they ordered something like 12, 15,000 pounds worth of furniture, which was a colossal amount of furniture for me way back then. A huge amount. And I said, I have no money. They said, oh, we'll give you the money. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. That doesn't happen, okay? In my bitterness. In my bitterness, in my pain, in my fear. In my fear, I applied the cross of Jesus. And I've applied the cross of Jesus so many times, over and over, over and over, over and over. And I applied this cross of Jesus into the bitterness of my life. And God comes forward and God rescues us. And God will rescue you just like he's rescued me. Just like he's rescued me. He said the water became fit to, 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 to drink. But then, but then it said also that in verse 25, the Lord issued a ruling and instruction for them. And he put them to the test. And I wonder if sometimes that's what God does with us. He puts us to the test. He wants us to know, do we just follow him because of all that he can give us constantly? Or do we follow him because we love him? Because we worship him? Because we honor, because we believe in him? We believe he's our salvation. We believe we're going to heaven. We believe our sins are forgiven. Not with our fingers crossed behind our back or just because somebody else has told us, but we believe. We believe. And, and he said this in verse 26, he said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God, listen carefully to me. Do what is right in, in, the, in the eyes of God. Do what is right. Don't keep going back to do things. Pay no, uh, and, and if sorry, and if you pay attention to his commands, and his commands are not heavy, his commands are not difficult, his commands are love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. You'll find that in Deuteronomy chapter 6. If you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul with all your mind, with all your strength. Love him. He said, if you listen carefully, do what is right in his eyes and pay attention to his commands and keep his decrees. And his commands are not burdensome. His commands are not hard. Love the Lord your God. And then God says that, look, if you will do that, if you will follow me, if you will keep your eyes on me, then I will do this. I will not bring on you any of the diseases that I brought on the Egyptians. You know, before God brought the people out of Egypt, he brought, he brought diseases upon the people of Egypt to, to cause them to let the Israelites go. So the Israelites knew about this because they knew, they saw that the Egyptians were, uh, were being disobedient to God and he brought diseases upon them. And the Israelites knew what these diseases were. And what God's saying is, if we keep our eyes on God, keep our eyes on Jesus, keep applying the cross, applying the cross, applying the cross, or applying the blood of Jesus, which is the same thing. But applying, application, the blood of Jesus is so powerful. You know, many years ago I went to India and there was, I was in this meeting and I was praying and it was like there was a wall and nothing was happening. And there was a, there was a darkness and there was a desperation. It was like there was a, 
It was like there was a strong man over the whole thing, over the whole atmosphere, holding it. It reminded me of Ephesians 6, where it says, we battle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers of this dark world. That's what it reminded me of. And you and I, in our lives, we, we can be oppressed and suppressed and crushed. But God, but God. Anyway, in India this time, I, I came and I prayed for this particular guy and he had his Bible under his arm and he looked like the real deal, you know. And as I said, nothing had happened up to this point and as I prayed for him, all of a sudden, nothing happened. And then all of a sudden, I said to pray, Lord God, would you send your power over your Holy Spirit? Pray, pray. And then he started to change and he started to go crazy. And he just started screaming and foaming at the mouth at me. And he had the Bible under his arm, foaming and screaming. And I started to pray for him and I played the blood of Jesus over him to break every curse, to break every fear, to break every demonic act and every demonic power in the name of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus somehow in the spiritual realms came and died. Because I applied it because I was able to. Because I called on the cross. I called on the cross and he came and the power of Jesus came over this guy and he just, poof, he fell on the floor and well, back in the chair actually and he was forming it down and it was like steam was coming off him. It was an incredible experience. And when he came round, he looked at me and his eyes were wide and light and he looked at me, his face was smiling as if, wow, what happened? And something was broken in that day. We battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Never has there been ever more a day in our lives where we've needed God. Never have we ever lived through a time where we needed the power of the living God, the blood of Jesus, who saves the power, the God who sent his son. Never before have we ever needed to get passionate for this God? Have we ever needed to believe? Have we ever needed to love? Never before have we ever been. No one's ever been here before. You've never been here before. I've never been here before. The world has never been here before. But God, but God, and no matter what's caused this coronavirus and this panic and this shame and this filth of life that we experience and we see all around us, God, we can apply the cross in the bitterness of life, we can apply the cross of Jesus. And I want to encourage you to do that today. I want to encourage you to apply the cross of Jesus to your life. Not just one day, but every day. It's easy. You just do it by prayer. And you pray and you ask God and you believe. You open your heart. Don't stand at the edge of the water. Don't stand at the edge of the water waiting. Don't stand at the edge of the water waiting for God. In fear, call out to God. Call out to God. I want to go to that place. It's in, it's in Exodus 14, to be quite honest. God just leads us and guides us. And we're going to Exodus 14. Exodus 14, 23. It said the Egyptians pursued them. Pursued who? Pursued the Israelites. This is, it's kind of like, uh, you know when you watch a film and you go back in time? Well, we've just gone back in time uh, a few days. Not that many days, but a few days. A few days. The Egyptians pursued them and all Pharaoh's horse and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. Followed them into the sea. No, go back a bit further. Hallelujah. 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 Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Exodus 14 verse 10. Here we are. Sorry. Here we are. Exodus 14 verse 10. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians marching after them. And it said they were terrified. They were terrified. And they cried out to the Lord, Lord, save us. And then they said to Moses, Moses, was it because uh, there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? Is that why you brought us? We could have died in Egypt. We didn't have found somewhere to bury us. There's plenty of sand there. Is that why you've done that? What have you done to us? Bringing us out of Egypt. You've brought us to sudden death. The army's going to kill us. They were terrified. What have you done to us? And we can look at life sometimes. We can say, life, what have you done to me, life? And we can get terrified. And they were terrified. And they said, didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve thee. Leave us alone. I'd rather stay in the world. I'd rather be an addiction. I'd rather be... Lost in filth and die out here. Leave us alone. 
It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in this desert. Moses said to the people, listen, don't be afraid. You know, have you ever tried to tell somebody who's terrified, don't be afraid? Uh-uh. Does it work, does it? Doesn't work. They're terrified because terror consumes them. Terror and fear consumes them. But, it, but Moses said this, do not be afraid. Stand firm. Stand firm. Don't be afraid. Just look, just stand firm. Because when we're afraid, we're running around like, uh, I don't like, no, I, I wouldn't say headless chickens. But you know what? We're running around crazy, not knowing which way to go. Bad example, that. Bad example. But running around, not knowing where to go. But he said, stand firm. Don't run around. Quit fear. Quit running around. If you just stand firm, you'll see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. That's what Moses is saying. And I want to speak to you today as well. This could be for you. Stand firm. Stand firm. Stand firm, he said. This is what God says. Stand firm. We can, you know what God did then? It's the same God. What God could do for the Israelites then in fear, he can do for you and he can do for me. He said, stand firm. The Lord will, and, and see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. And he said, the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. If we could only believe that. Huh? The fears that are plaguing you today, the desperation, the guilt and the shame that's chasing you, you see today, the fears you will never see again. Imagine that, eh? Imagine if you, if you could come up to somebody and say, you know what, I'm terrified about this, 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 and this. And they say, okay, we'll wipe that off your slate. Well, that's what God can do. That's what the blood of Jesus can do. And in verse 14, it says this, the Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. We need to be still. We're in a tremendous, horrendous, difficult, experienced time. We just are. And fear can cause us to run every which way. But wouldn't it be wonderful if it causes you to run to the cross of Jesus? If it causes us to trust in our God. Causes us to trust in our God. You know what? We've got to go to, do you not know, remember that word about standing firm? We've got to go to uh, Ephesians. I want to find Ephesians chapter 6. Because in Ephesians chapter 6, here we go. I hope you're enjoying this. It's good as this. Ephesians chapter 6. The Apostle Paul is talking about the armour of God. And he's coming to the end of his letter. He's talking about uh, the armour. And he said in verse 10, Finally be strong in the Lord and in, and in his mighty power. Be strong in the Lord. How can we be strong in the Lord? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Learn to love him. Learn to acknowledge him. And he says, put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. The devil's schemes. The devil. In other words, the devil, Satan, our enemy, the devil wants us to be destroyed and consumed by fear and hatred. But God sent his son to save us. And Paul says this, he said, and this is coming from an experienced man of God. An experienced man of God who at one stage was consumed by the devil he was uh, he was tricked he was deceived because Paul who was then called Saul was murdering Christians and now look this Paul praise God God saved him praise the Lord God saved him in the name of Jesus isn't that wonderful that God saved him and he said that for our struggle it's not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual force of evil in the heavenly realms. Paul recognised that there was stuff against us. And then he said, therefore put on the full armour of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand. When the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand. Remember about this, what Moses said to the Israelites? Just stand firm, stand firm. Paul's saying this to us today, that we can stand when the spiritual force of evil in the heaven realms come against you. Put on the armour of God so that you may be able to stand your ground. And then after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then. But it's not only standing firm, it's not standing firm in your own strength. Oh, I love that verse. You know I love this verse? 
But you, I'm sorry, I will come back to that. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you've shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees his secret will reward you openly. Matthew 6, 6. Write it on your heart. Write it on your mind. Write it on your hands. Write it wherever. But remember it. But don't only write it, apply it. Don't just be hearers and writers of the word. Do what it says. Step into the word. Let the word, let the word um, saturate you. Let the word, yes, saturate you. Saturate you. What is it when you put a piece of chicken in, uh, in, in uh, you know, like Chinese stuff? What is it? Um, come on, I bet you're all shouting it out to me, aren't you? Can't remember what it is. Doesn't matter. I'm going to use saturate. Uh, oh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Never mind. Do it anyway. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But look, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled. So stand firm in the truth. Stand firm. Truth buckled round your waist. The breastplate of righteousness. Your feet fitted with the redness. In other words, in all these things that we are, know God, love the Lord your God. You've got to read Galatians 6 and apply it and apply it and apply it. And it drops down to verse 18 and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Pray in the spirit. What does that mean? A lot of people think that it means you've got to pray in tongues. Because tongues is a spiritual language, like shikarada sura ba korada ba satanta. It's a gift that God gives us. Korasita sanda kashikarada da ba satanta. Well, that's praying in the spirit, or with this gift of tongues that we pray, and that's that's great. That's great. But um, I'm thinking there's another something else that that uh, if I can find it. I'm, I'm doing this today and I hope you're bearing with me. I hope you're not getting fed up. I'd be fed up probably by now, if I'm honest. Uh, sorry, I'm going up to John chapter 4. I'm going up to John chapter 4 because in John chapter 4, here we go, there's a story uh, about where Jesus met a woman at a well. And it's a great story. You should read it. And I can't read it all, obviously. We're 32 minutes, and I want to get this bit in, okay? It, it's linking in with the Spirit. So look, uh, I'm, I'm reading from verse 21. Woman, this is Jesus speaking. Woman, Jesus says, Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem, okay? Now, now what does that mean? The mountain or in Jerusalem, it's talking about places. So a time's coming... When actually, you won't have to come to the mountain to worship God. That's the only place you can worship. Or Jerusalem, that's the only place you can worship. Because this is what, and Jesus said, a time is coming when that's going to change. And he says, you Samaritans, you worship what you don't even know. So they're worshiping the Samaritans. They worship pagan idols, uh, wooden statues, carvings. Bring it to modern day world. People worshiping fo football, maybe. People worshiping anything that makes them feel good. Shopping, shopping therapy. I don't know. Beauty therapy. You can worship it. You can worship it. You can make an idol out of it. And Jesus said, saying that to the Samaritan, but he's saying salvation is from the Jews. And he's saying, yet a time is coming and has now come. Here we go, remember, about worshiping in spirit, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they're the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit, right? So his, spirit, his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. Now, I believe today, never knew this before, never thought about this before. Okay, God is spirit, right? We're introduced to God right in the beginning in, in Genesis that the spirit of God hovers over the surface of the deep. So God can move everywhere and anywhere and all over. So he can be here in this room. He can be with you, listening to your room and everybody else who's listening to this. The Spirit of God's there. He can be in the centre of town. He can be on the top of the hill. He can be in a valley. God can be anywhere. Now, if we are men and women of God filled with the Spirit, then wherever we are, God is with us. And we can worship God there. In other words, we don't need to go to a building to worship God. That that's church. God, 
God's bringing a change. Yeah, the Bible says, um, don't stop meeting together. That's great. And we don't want to stop meeting together. And I don't, I love meeting together. It's important. We must meet together. But that's not the only place we can worship God. Because we can worship God in spirit and in truth. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hallelujah. 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 You can worship God. Matthew 6, 6. Closing your door. So, Jesus saying, and this is Jesus saying this. Remember we brought Jesus right in in the beginning with the cross. This is Jesus. So I want to encourage you today, okay? I really want to encourage you just to take anything from this that if you're stood in a place and you're terrified, you, you don't know which way to turn. I could actually even say you're almost frozen to the spot. That's not standing, that's being frozen. I'm not talking about being frozen to the spot when I'm talking about standing. When I'm talking about standing, when we stand, I'm talking, not talking about this, I'm talking about we stand up right like this. Shoulders back, confident, chest out if you like, confident, strong arm, strong arm of the Lord, confident, knowing I can do this, I can overcome this situation, I can do this because I'm standing strong in the Lord, because I'm applying the cross of Jesus to my situation, to my life. You know, the Spirit of God is everywhere. You can worship God in spirit and truth. You can worship God in your car on your way to work. You can worship God in your car on two-way shopping. You can worship God walking down the street. You can worship God um, uh, running, riding a bike, anything, anything. Wherever you can worship God, where you are right now. Even if after you've been to the, you can worship God filling the kettle and making the brew. You can worship God washing up. You can worship God on the toilet. You can worship God doing the washing. You can worship God in the garden. You can worship God anywhere. You can worship God in this beautiful, amazing gift of life. Let us start worshiping God. Let us start standing strong. Let us start praising his name and let us start applying the cross of Jesus to our lives because it is a cross that will save us and it's a cross that is prepared a way and it is a cross that became the way because Jesus was nailed on it. If you've just got a piece of wood and know Jesus, you've got a piece of wood. But you apply Jesus to it and you've got salvation. And Jesus was crucified for you and for me. And he saved us. Would you be saved? Walk in the salvation. Walk in the gift that God's given us. Hallelujah. I want to pray, Father God. I pray that the whoosh of the Holy Spirit would enter everybody's heart today. That the whoosh of the presence of God, that the strong wind of the power of the living God, that we apply the cross to everybody's life today. Teach us how to apply the cross. I apply the cross. Maybe you're not sure how to do that. Maybe. So I'm going to just say this prayer and you might want to repeat it after me for your situation. I don't know. For all those that do, here we go. Father in heaven, Father in heaven, I want to thank you for your son, Jesus. I want to thank you that the cross isn't just a crucifixion post or a torture piece of uh, equipment. I want to thank you that the cross is for my salvation and all my brothers and sisters' salvation. I want to thank you right now. So I want to apply that cross and the power of the cross to my life right now. I'm getting, it might be that you have relationship issues, struggling relationships. We want to apply the cross to the center of our relationship, into my relationship with my wife, into my relationship with my husband or my boyfriend or my girlfriend. I want to apply the cross to that. It might be that you have difficulty with your children. I want to apply the cross of Jesus into the relationship I have with my children. Encourage me and help me, oh God. Teach me how to bring my children up correctly. I apply the cross. It might be that you're struggling at work. I want to apply the cross to my situation at work, to my ability to work. I want to apply the cross in the name of Jesus. See, it's not so difficult. Whatever your needs, apply the cross of Jesus. 
Remember the bitter while ago, 39 minutes ago, the bitterness of the water, the bitterness of the world, the piece of wood, throw it in, the cross of Jesus, get it in there. Hallelujah. Be blessed, be encouraged. Know that we do not believe in vain and we do not believe in cleverly invented stories. But what I proclaim to you today and the stories I've shared with you today are from my real life experience. God is alive. He is alive. God is great. God loves you. God is passionate about you. Let us get passionate about him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Be encouraged. Have a great day and follow Jesus. Amen.